Welcome to the What You Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori Amin, will interview published authors to chat about their work, journey to getting published, and their book recommendations. If you share a passion for books and always looking for your next read, then join us. Hi, Lydia. Welcome to What You Next podcast. Hi, Laura. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. Oh, I'm so excited to have you here. So tell us a little bit about yourself. So um, I am the author of 42 novels, uh, mostly romance, Mm -hmm. and um, they're all pretty, uh, it's a big variety. I do a lot of small town, big drama, family saga stuff. So sometimes it's billionaire, sometimes, you know, my characters have financial troubles and woes. Um, I do a little bit of paranormal and um, I'm pretty much all over the map with that stuff. I mean, like I have rom-coms. I even have one dark psychological thriller out there. Oh my gosh. So what led you to write romance? Were you a romance reader growing up? or um, just- Actually, oh, wow. I was not much of a reader growing up. Um, I'm dyslexic. So reading for me was extremely hard. When I was young, my favorite book was um, Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein because it was the only book that made words fun for me because words were very, very challenging when I was young. And, um, you know, I just, I carry that book around. Like I still have some of the poems memorized from it. Um, but so I didn't read a lot when I was younger and it was so, it was such a sensitive topic for me that I would even carry around large novels pretending to read them because all of my friends were like getting better and I wasn't. Mm. Um, and it wasn't until I was, in my mid twenties that I, I originally uh, graduated, you know, and became a special ed teacher. And that was my mm-hmm. career choice. And then in my mid twenties, right after I had my daughter, uh, someone had recommended a romance novel to me. And I never knew that romance could, I never knew that romance novels had such an open door policy, I guess you could say, <laughs> you know, because I always liked, you know, I love, um, you know, like HBO series that are racy and things like that. Mm -hmm. And to find out that books were hiding even more racy content, (laughs) Mm -hmm. let's just say I was hooked. Um, and I proceeded to get addicted in a matter of like two weeks. We went on a family vacation. I didn't talk to anyone. I was literally looking up bookstores and I mean, trying to locate where I could buy my next book while on vacation with family and friends. (laughs) So I had proceeded to ignore all of my friends and family on vacation to binge read. Um, It was actually the Sookie Stackhouse novels. I binge read that that Sookie Stackhouse novels like before I read romance. So it was like such a great like binge read because I didn't know romance existed. Yes, same thing. I was like, this is amazing. (laughs) And and you know what? Technically, they're not even really romance. They're like cozy mystery. Like, I mean, I would consider them romance because the books are so hot. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Your books are high, but yeah, they're like, they're more like a cozy mystery, kind of like trying to figure out the vampires. It's a little paranormal, but it's like, not like, you know, but there were, I found them on, on Goodwill, I think in 2008, I found like, it was just when the HBO show was coming out yes. and I guess someone bought, someone sold their collection. So I got them for like $10, like a collection of them. And I just like devour that. Is that how you started? Like, That's really how, no, how I... I didn't I didn't start really reading until 2016 like those were before 2016 I was like reading like if I found an author then I'll read older backlist Mm -hmm. but I I did not have enough recommendations so there was like that was like a need I was like I need someone to tell me what I'm supposed to be reading (laughs) yeah so I mean like I started with that and then my uh when I was on vacation we were with a friend and she's like listen my vampires are from Seattle and they're teenagers and I think you should read them they sparkle and I was like I don't know (laughs) and what happened same as you I was like desperate for recommendations I was driving to the bookstores going to secondhand bookstores I mean like I was pushing my daughter's stroller for two miles to get to a secondhand bookstore sometimes just to load up on books. And I finally started, then I read, you know, Twilight was another binge when I blew through and I, I just kept, and you know, there was limits because their eBooks weren't really, I mean, they were around, but I didn't have a Kindle at that point. Yeah. Everything was still paper for me. Um, and then it was amazing because I had started writing in 2007 Mm -hmm. and I didn't do it for a career. I just did it kind of as like a reflection thing, but I was organizing my writing in chapters because it made sense. 
Um, and then my friends were reading what I was writing and they're like, this is a book, you know, what, what's the next chapter? When are you writing that? And I realized there was anticipation and, um, it just kind of snowballed from there, I guess. But in the year that followed, I had gone from hardly ever reading to Mm -hmm. fixing a lot of holes in my vocabulary. A lot of, I mean, I was spelling at a third grade level when I started writing and I basically used books to teach what I, my teachers couldn't really teach me in school because of a learning disability. And I went from reading nothing to 430 books that year. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I was reading more than a novel a day sometimes. <laughs> it was yeah. crazy. Because yeah. content. So, yeah. and, and that's so interesting to me because as a person who has a background in teaching, I think they're always telling us, you know, low level, high interest for kids who struggle with reading. And mm-hmm. I'm basically a big kid who struggled with reading. And once I found my high interest content, mm-hmm. I was unstoppable. Yep, I agree. I think when I start, when I discover reading again, um, I remember it was from May and from May to December, I read like 270 something books, like just devour them. But like, that was the only thing I was doing. And then the next year I read like 360 something books. And I was like, that was the only thing I was doing. And it was like my mental health like was improved because I was reading so much. Like I felt my, my anxiety was down. Like I was in a good place overall. I was still seeing my friends who still doing different things that I enjoy, but my mental health was like in a so much better space. And, yeah. you know, I, I do remember when I was heavily reading, I mean, like a book a day or more, mm-hmm. I remember upsetting a lot of people in my life, like, because you go through those moments where you're like, I'd rather be with my book. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) There wasn't this pressure, uh, like, so, I mean, and I think I'm a very, when I'm in my comfort zone, I'm chatty, and when I'm with my people, I'm okay, but I am a bit of an introvert on some level, and I think I realized that when books made me so much more relaxed and, and a better mental state, like you were saying. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, reading is fun. That's awesome. Definitely. So <laughs> let's, let's talk about the Jasper Falls series. Tell us oh, all about it. So Jasper Falls is a small town, big drama. Mm-hmm. Um, it actually, Jasper Falls is a, is a town that is within Center County, which is a fi- mm-hmm. Center County is real. It's in okay. Pennsylvania. I've dramatized it a whole bunch and, you know, fictionalized <laughs> it basically. But um, my My first big series to blow up was the McCullough Mountain series. That's an eight book series about an Irish family called the McCulloughs who live on a mountain in Center County. It's on the cusp of Jasper Falls. I never really had a name for the town because everything happened on the mountain. And when I was writing that series, they would often go into the town here and there and run into cousins and and neighbors. And the readers of that were like, well, when I finished it years ago, they would constantly, you know, send me emails and be like, well, what about cousin Ryan? Like where poor Ryan was having crappy dates all through eight books and we never saw him get a happy ending. So Mm -hmm. I had written Ryan's story. That was the first one in Jasper Falls called Wake My Heart. And because I wanted to make sure that new readers knew they didn't have to go back. They could, if they want more back, like readers who love Jasper Falls should absolutely in between books go binge the McCullough Mountain series because if you like one, you'll love the other. Um, and the, the McCulloughs make a lot of cameos in Jasper Falls, but it's not necessary to read them. All of the Jasper Falls books can be read as standalones. Um, each one focuses on a new couple. There's always a guaranteed happy ending. And um, so right now there are four. I'm in the middle of editing the fifth book. Ooh. So there's um, Wake My Heart is the first one. And that has, let's see, in that one, you get Cousin Ryan (laughs) and um, you get Maggie, who is a very young widow in the town. And she's very almost like a recluse since losing her husband, Nash. Um, That's a great one. It's a great opening to the series. And it really lets you in on a lot of things. There's some fun twists and surprises in it. And after that comes the best man, which is Ryan's brother, Patrick, and we get his story that's in uh, The Best Man, then Love Me Nots. I really love Me Nots just has a lot of my own personal like reading catnip. So you have Perrin, who is Maggie, 
Maggie's sister. She was the widow. So it's her mm-hmm. sister's story now. Mm-hmm. And Perrin's a little bit off men. Um, she's just done. She mm-hmm. got burned in the first book we saw kind of as a side uh, story. And in her book, there's a land dispute. And, you know, you have this big billionaire coming rolling into town with his big bag of money and getting in the way of everyone, which I love. I know that's such like a trope tropey kind of story, but I do love that. And I've never really written a land dispute. So it was fun to finally have my shot at that. My most recent Jasper Falls is Pining for You. Pining for You is a holiday romance. It's my very first holiday romance. Mm -hmm. I've written books that like cross over the holidays and, you know, there's a holiday scene, but never one that was like a focused holiday romance. Mm -hmm. So I really love Pining for You. It has um, Skylar, who is a young, uh, early 20s um, heroine. And she is kind of trying to figure out who she is, where she belongs. And she wants to, she's just gotten her associates and she wants to finish her bachelor's degree. Her dream is to one day run a a daycare, not just work in one, but own her own, run it in in Jasper Falls. Mm -hmm. Um, Her grandmom currently watches almost all of the children in the town. So, Mm -hmm. and she's getting older. So she's trying to think ahead. She gets caught up with a um, job offer from the town mayor who Mm -hmm. is single and a beautiful bachelor. Um, And she takes a position over the winter as his daughter's nanny. So there's an age gap. There's a little bit of that governess, you know, Von Trapp kind of chemistry going on, which I love that as well. Mm -hmm. And because she's from this gigantic um, big, you know, nosy meddling family. She's got a lot of complications where her family steps in and, you know, complicates issues for those two to be together because of the age gap thing. And it's a lot of her standing her own ground and deciding what's right for her and where she belongs. Oh, it's so good. And where can we expect with book five? So book five is going to come out around Valentine's Day, just before Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Um, Book five is My Funny Valentine. And um, it is, it features, uh, (laughs) it features a character. This one's a little bit of a challenge. I know that some readers are going to be like, no way, you're never going to make me like her. Um, There's a character, Erin, who has been around since the McCullough Mountain series and she's also been a big part of Jasper Falls. She was in Pining for You. She was the villain in Pining for You. Mm-hmm. Um and nobody likes Aaron. And nobody's ever liked Aaron in, in any of the series. Aaron's <laughs> always been awful. Poor Aaron. And um I just I was so I you know when we write it's like a iceberg where we share, you know, the 10% of the character, but we have their characters so well developed, the characterization, what moves them, their goals, their motivations, all of that. So it always hurts me a little bit when, when, you know, readers will message you and be like, oh, I wish you would have hit her by a bus or something like that. I know. <laughs> so vengeful, because I know what's causing all this. So I figured it was time to share Aaron's backstory and we really get to know Aaron. And the interesting thing I would say, I would say about almost all of my books is that you're never getting away without feeling every emotion on the spectrum. Mm-hmm. So I, I do challenge a lot of, you know, cold-hearted readers that I could make them cry with certain books. Um, Not that these are tear jerkers, but they are emotional. And My Funny Valentine is actually a very emotional story. Um, Every time I write a Jasper Falls, I would go to say, it's like, oh, this is my favorite. (laughs) But I I Honestly, every book that you probably, the book that you're currently writing is going to be your favorite book, you know, because you're like immersed in it and you're like loving it. You're like, oh my gosh, this is great. You know, Yeah, I think that, I think that you really have to, if you're not loving it, then you're not pushing yourself hard enough. Like you should feel it. You're right. You should feel that way, especially if you're giving it your all. So yeah. And yeah. And it it makes sense. Like the author, the reader can feel it. The reader can Mm -hmm. feel like if you love it and you're like, you're immersed in it, you know, what's happening. You feel good about it you're like, okay, like we're going on a wild ride and you're taking us there. (laughs) Yes. Yes. I, I, I really like them. I think they're a lot of fun. Oh, so good. Awesome. So let's have some book recommendations. Do you have any recommend uh, books you recommend? It doesn't have to be any genre. It can just be anything. Just book the spark joy. All right. 
So my absolute favorite romance of all time, if we are doing, I have two, I do put them in order though. Okay. And they are, they absolutely are connected. My first, I always recommend this one because I just think it's a perfect romance. I think it's a perfect, the writing, the story, the arc, all of it. It's um, Sugar Daddy by Lisa Kleepass. Absolutely beautifully done. It's part of her Travis series. Mm -hmm. You can read it as a standalone, but you'll want more because it's, she's, her, her words are incredible. I mean, and I binged, have you read Lisa Kleepass? I have read her story roles. I have not yet read the Travis series, but it's highly recommended. (laughs) Yes. So like, I'm a huge fan of her historicals. Um, I think my favorite is again, the magic, but um, I love like the wallflowers and all of that. I just, oh, she, Lisa Kleepas is just so, she's such a good writer. Yeah. She um, can do no wrong. Like she, she, she really can't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. her Travis series is, I'm not a rereader of books often. Mm-hmm. I try to reread her Travis series every summer because I think it makes me a better writer and I think it makes me a better reader. And I think it says, you know, it's okay to have these standards with books because look, they're out there. They're just really hard gems to find. Mm -hmm. Um, It's a treasure. So I love Sugar Daddy. My second favorite, and this is such a close one, but I believe you can't, one can't exist without the other is Blue Eyed Devil, which is the Mm -hmm. sequel second story in the Travis series. So first you would read Sugar Daddy and then you would read Blue Eye Devil. And they really are like the same story broken into two books, even though they're about two separate characters because Mm -hmm. there's so many common characters in there. It's, they are just incredible. Now, uh, Blue Eye Devil is, it's a little bit more suspenseful. It's a little more edgier. It's a little more dangerous. Um, he's a little more alpha, but both of them are very alpha. So I love, 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 love them. So that would be my romance. Um, I do read, I read a lot of nonfiction stuff. Um, you know, I've already recommended where the sidewalk ends. I think that everyone should read that book. I think if they have children or if they just have a child soul inside of them somewhere, read it. It'll make you smile. It's just fun with words. Um, I would say if I had to recommend two nonfictions. Okay, so, and I'm all over the map with nonfictions. I mean, I read a whole bunch of stuff. If I were to recommend one, I think I would pick Michael Pollan's Food Rules, which is a book on food. (laughs) But I think it's fantastic. It's like a coffee table book. Um, the entries are about a page to, you know, two pages long Mm -hmm. and they're rules about food. Like, I think the dedication in it is a food rule. Like, you know, this book's dedicated to his mother because she told him to have butter, not margarine. And it's just simple rules. Cause I think food's such a confusing science, especially in America. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I appreciate that clarity, the simplification of it. Yeah. Another a uh, nonfiction, which is more of a narrative nonfiction that I think everyone should read would be, um, and this is a heartbreaking one, but The Child Called It. I think I think that that book stuck with me more than mm-hmm. almost any book. Um, I think it's important for people to read, anyone who's going to be working around children or having children um, or just anyone who knows children should read it because it's just, it's so, it, it makes you a more compassionate person. It makes you more aware that everyone is fighting their own crisis, even when it appears that they're not. And I think that that's an amazing one. And that's a true story. So that one, that kind of blew my mind, that book, Mm -hmm. like really blew my mind. That sounds good. I love these recommendations. And yes, to Lisa Claybest, you know, (laughs) to think about her contemporary series, because we only, I think we associate Lisa Claybest with historicals, but she has this great contemporary series that we should all check out. So yeah, I love it. Awesome. Tell us where you can find you online. So um, I'm on Instagram and Facebook mostly. Um, My Facebook is just, you know, Facebook, Lydia Michaels. My Instagram handle is at Lydia underscore Michaels underscore books. Um, My website is LydiaMichaelsBooks.com. And if you need to email me or ask questions or reach out, it's Lydia at LydiaMichaelsBooks.com.
And I'm also on Pinterest and Twitter and stuff, but they're my two most active platforms. That sounds good. Thank you, Lydia, for being on the show. Thank you so much, Laura. I really enjoyed talking books with you. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, rate, and review the show. This is the easiest way to support the podcast. Today's episode's partner is Libra FM. If you're an audiobook listener, then you should add Libra FM as your go-to source for paid audiobooks. Libra FM makes it possible for you to buy audiobooks to your local bookstore. Memberships start at $14.95, and they also have great sales for women's audiobooks each month for $3.99, thanks to the Kiss Club. To sign up for Libra FM, please visit whattoreadnextblog.com slash LibraFM. You will receive a free audiobook when you sign up for a monthly subscription. If you purchase a subscription through our link, you will be supporting the podcast at no cost to you. The What to Read Next podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Please visit frolic.media slash podcast to discover new shows to tune in. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.